everyone, so welcome back. So I'm going to be talking about bone growth in continuation of our bone series. And one of the things I want you to know is that there are several factors that affect bone growth. And when we make bone growth from u utero, in utero to, you know, old age, such as stress, health, exercise, hormone, heredity, and nutrition. Obviously, I'm going to be concentrating more on the medical, the scientific portion of it, and less on, you know, the other factors like stress and, and exercise. So let's get started with talking about what we mean by bone growth, postnatal growth. This is the growth that occurs after a child is born, and it starts with, um, there are two things that can happen, interstitial or longitudinal growth, and that's when the bones grow longer, you know, in, in, in terms of the length, or we can say grows lengthwise. And then the second one will be the appositional growth. The, the bones have to grow wider or thicker. So that's going to be the two ways. Uh, most people just think bones grow longer, but we also have to talk about the thickness of the bones. And bones stop growing longer at the end of adolescence, but they never really stop growing, um, at least in width. And, you know, one of the things you would, and one of the things um, um, that you could see is, let's say you take a picture of grandpa um, when he was 17, and then you take a picture of him at 80, you could tell that even though grandpa doesn't seem or look like he has gained that much weight, um, the facial structures are different. And that's because there are there has been some bone growth that has occurred during the years. So let's go into a bit more detail about interstitial growth. So which is the lengthening? This requires the presence of epiphyseal cartilage, the presence of epiphyseal cartilage in the epiphyseal plate. So one of the things you're gonna see in this x-ray is that it looks like there's a space in between. And you might think, oh wait, does this person have a fracture? No, this actually signifies when you're looking at this, this tells you that this bone this um, individual is still growing. Um, this space is actually um, consists of cartilage, which is, you know, where you would magnify so that you can see what's going on here. So, you know, let's say you see an x-ray, automatically, even if they didn't give you the age, you can tell, okay, this is still a growing individual because cartilage is still present. If the person has stopped growing, then that cartilage will be replaced with bone. So this tells us that this bone still has the ability to grow longer. So the chondroblasts will divide, you know, like I said, less um, often near the end of adolescence and the epiphyseal plate will eventually thin out and is replaced by bone. So again, if you haven't seen the video of the um, endochondral and um, membranous ossification, how bones are made, make sure you go back and take a look at that because I discuss a little bit more. So let's take a look at what's really going on here. So one of the first thing um, we're gonna see is the resting zone. So this resting zone, um, it's not really part of the four, um, the, the four zones are active, resting. It means the area of cartilage on the epiphyseal plate. This area is not active. We say it's inactive. And then we have these four zones that are active. The first zone would be the proliferation zone. And as the name implies, there's rapid growth taking place here. So we see the new cells are moving upward, which then pushes the epiphysis away from the diaphysis. If I have not mentioned what epiphysis mean, epiphysis is the ends of bone. So you have, you're gonna have um, a proximal epiphysis and you're gonna have a distal epiphysis. We talked about what these terms mean. Um, proximal means closer to distal, farther away. And then this would then, in the proliferation zone, this would then cause the lengthening of the bone. Basically, we see the cartilage cells undergoing mitosis, so they're dividing. Then we get to the hypertrophic zone. So the word hypertrophy means to enlarge or make bigger, which is what we're seeing here. We're seeing that these um, older cartilage cells in the lacunae are enlarging or getting bigger. 
In the third zone, which we call the calcification zone, the surrounding cartilage matrix will calcify, um, which is why we call it a calcification zone, meaning they become a little bit more hardened, and the chondrocytes start to die and deteriorate. And the last zone is going to be the ossification zone, which we're seeing here. Um, we start seeing the calcified cartilage at the epiphysis diaphysis junction. So there are a series of steps, and then we start seeing new bone forming. We start seeing new bone forming here. And this, all of these cause the lengthening or, you know, the person to grow longer or taller. So let's now look at the epiphyseal plate closure. I mentioned earlier that, you know, if when we take a look at the at the cartilage, I mean, at, at the ends of the bone, we're gonna see the epiphyseal plate. But now, if you take a look at this diagram here, we don't see the blue, which signifies the cartilage. It has now fused. So instead, we call it an epiphyseal line. So when you're taking a look at this bone, you can automatically tell this is a bone of an adult because this person is not growing any longer. There's no more epiphyseal plate. It has been replaced with epiphyseal line. And this occurs when the epiphysis and the diaphysis fuse. So bone lengthening ceases earlier in females and it's also because females start earlier. And, um, you know, I'll talk about the effect of hormones like estrogen, which also causes it to close. Um, it causes it to, you know, um, start the bone growth earlier and also you know, stop uh, and, and stop it earlier than in males, which occurs at age 21. So females, bone lengthening ceases around age 18 and in males around age 21. So I'm gonna be going, um, talking about, you know, spongy bone, um, epiphysis, all of this when we get to bone histology. So let's see some before growth remodeling. We're going to see as the bone growth growth and length, a remodeling or resorption. Um, we talked about osteoclasts. Osteoclasts are bone breaking cells and osteoblasts are going to be bone building cells. So someone might say, why do we need to break down bone, especially when you're growing? Well, we have to basically fine tune it, all right? Um, kind of like shave it down, which is what we're seeing here. And by the way, their articular cartilage, which you see here and here, the word articular or articulate, um, it's not like this one we see in English, it just means to join or to connect. So this is the cartilage that's going to join and connect and most of the time is going to be hyaline cartilage. So we see the articular and epiphyseal plate cartilage growing and replaced by bone, you know, um, through the endochondral ossification. So one of the things that you also will see, you know, when you get to the clinical field is when we're taking x-ray, we like to compare with the older ones. So we can see before grown um, remodeling and after the bone has gotten um, longer and the width, all right, a little bit thicker. All right, so bone was added here by a positional growth, the thickness. And we can see that some of the bone has also been resorbed, you know, so that there are no bumps and unnecessary bumps or, you know, indentations on the bone. We have, we have that smooth surface due to osteoclast activity. So now let's see a positional growth, which is the thickness of the bone or the width. So bones grow in width as they lengthen through interstitial growth, and this occurs throughout life. Um, for example, bones thicken in response to stress from muscle activity or added weight. What we mean is if you start working out now, you start lifting weights, your bones have to be able to accommodate to that. So they will grow thicker as a result. Um, if your job involves you being, you know, not being active, you're going to see a decrease in that. And if your job, your occupation involves you, you know, being like a postal worker where you're on your feet all day, you're walking, your bone will um, also adjust to that. It will be thicker. So I mentioned hormone regulations. So there are three main hormones that play a role. Obviously, it's the growth hormone when we get to the endocrine system. Now I'm going to be talking more about this in detail. This is the most important hormone. It stimulates the epiphyseal plate activity, um, especially in infancy and in childhood. 
Um, and then thyroid hormone. Most people don't really think that, you know, thyroid hormones because we tend to see the abnormalities in adulthood, but it's actually very essential, critical um, in children because it ensures proper bone um, proportions so that one leg is not longer than the other um, so that, you know, they're not misshapen. And this actually starts from in utero. Even the development of bones when the baby is inside the uterus, when the baby is developing, thyroid hormone is important. And let's say a mom has a thyroid deficiency, whether hyper or hypo, we're gonna need to adjust her medication so that it doesn't affect the thyroid hormone production of the baby. And sex hormone. So testosterone and estrogen. So this promotes an end adolescent growth, spurs um, through the epiphyseal plate closure. What, you know, we're gonna see also the thickness um, of, of a male's bone. It's also due to testosterone. Um, we're gonna see that it weighs a lot more than a female's bone. Um, there's also a lot of indentation on the male bone, which because of the extra muscle, the bone, like I said, needs to be able to accommodate to that and hold that muscle. We tend to see it more, you know, more pronounced in males. So these are the other factors. I'm going to go quickly through them. Um, heredity growth is um, determined by genetics. And studies show that 60 to 80% is determined by genetics, meaning that if you, everybody in your family, your mom, your dad, your relatives are tall, most likely you're going to be tall. And if it's the opposite, most likely you're going to be shorter. So genetics definitely play a role there. Nutrition plays a key role. So we've seen situations that even though the relatives may be taller or average size, if the child is not um, is malnourished, studies show that this will affect the desired growth. So you're still going to be like, well, you're not exactly short, but you're not as tall as your other relatives because of malnourishment. So desired growth would not be achieved. Health is all, health also plays a big role. You know, if a child is constantly sick, the body is undergoing, you know, stress, which could be diseases, growth will be affected. And there are also certain medical conditions that can affect growth, like Turner syndrome, um, which is a chromosomal abnormality, like Down syndrome. Um, these individuals tend to be of a shorter stature. That's actually one of the, um, you know, besides um, carrier typing, to, to discover this. This is also one of the features of the diseases. And also if um, the individual has G GI tract disease, like celiac disease, where they're not absorbing their necessary nutrients. So if you're not absorbing the necessary nutrients needed for growth, then that would not, that will also affect the growth. Exercise, um, studies show that physical activity during childhood can influence a person's growth and stress so response to mechanical stress i mentioned this earlier for example handedness if you're whether you're right-handed or left-handed if they were to take your x-ray and you were not even in the room the the they can interpret and say oh this person is right-handed this person is left-handed and you're like how did you know i never even held a pen or anything you, you never saw me a day in your life but this is because our dominant hand um, tend to be thicker and stronger bone. So let's say you have like a fracture or you know a sprain on your dominant hand and you just really, you find it difficult to use your non-dominant hand and you're like, I don't understand. I mean, you're looking at it, it looks the same, but that's because your non-dominant hand is not thicker and it's not as strong as your dominant hand. And we also see large bony projections in um, heavy and active muscles area. Um, for example, we see that weightlifters, they have increased thickness at muscle sites. And when we take a look at the bones of fetus and bedridden people, they're featureless, no major marks. If you take a look, you're like, you see a bone of a fetus, they have not really moved, there's no movement, um, it's featureless. And I just wanted to bring in, you know, talk about atrophy. Also, atrophy really means that if you don't use your um, you know, you will lose the function of it. So you, you can have muscle atrophy if you don't lose, if you don't use your muscle. So let's say, you know, um, you know, in a hospital setting, someone had, um, a surgery and obviously the, you know, the PT people are going to come in and, 
knock on the door and say oh let's just walk down the hall and you're like um i just came out from surgery maybe when i'm healed maybe i can i can you know do your physical therapy exercises but because if you don't use your muscles you can lose it i mean there are other factors of you know trying to prevent embolism and so on but you know if you don't use your muscles we need to start exercising those muscles immediately so that you don't lose the function so that's going to be the end of bone growth all right thank you bye bye